are online welcome back uh today we are going to i'm gonna try to um finish this exercise cvar 10 um exercise uh it's part of the uh pytorch udacity scholarship that i get about like two three weeks ago so it's uh we're dealing with uh, convolutional neural networks um if uh, any of you guys have just been following me uh, so I've been uh, uh, learning about deep learning since the past, I don't know, probably six months, uh, six months or so. Yeah, it gives me a headache. Um, so right now we are, I'm trying to understand or I'm trying to um, share with you what I'm learning right now as we go. Um, so bear with me. It's a uh, deep learning network it's called cnn cnn is a network in deep learning that, that's being used to um, classify uh, images especially rich real world images so cvar 10 is a database is a famous database um, so we are and um, trying to understand how these things work okay so uh, in these images, uh, there are small color images. I think it's uh, 32 by 32 pixels. And then in, in it has um, 10 classes. Okay. Um, and these are the examples of the classes. So it has airplane, automobile, bird, cat, deer, dog, frog, horse, ship. Is that 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, cool. So was this multi class class multi class classifications multi object oh, no yeah multi 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 uh, multi classifications yeah okay that's for QDA. oh yeah by the way this is uh, using uh, pytorch uh, it's a fra uh, facebook um, deep learning framework it's kind of a competitor of the tensorflow which is by uh, google uh, which is gaining ground over tensorflow from what i heard um from the people already like been using it they said it's more flexible the framework than tensorflow but tensorflow is going to release their tensorflow i think 2.0 i'm not sure it's already released but they're already like announcing it so it's going to come soon and it's going to be like also as flexible as supposed to be and even better anyway so we are using pytorch is kind of like uh it's called Pi because it's using kind of like a Python kind of uh, uh, syntax. Okay, so that's for CUDA. CUDA is um, is a parallel computing uh, um, platform developed by I think Nvidia. <clears throat> uh, because uh, deep learning uh, uh, model or deep deep learning uh, uh, training or deep learning uh, uh, yeah when you learn when you train like deep learning um, data sets um, it's very um, data driven data intensive right uh, so uh, parallel uh, computing uh, uh, it's kind of necessary otherwise you're gonna wait for like I don't know days weeks right so this is where um, GPU um, shines So we are having a 32 by 30, 32 pixels of images and uh, times three because it's a color images because uh, color images has three channels, uh, red, green, and blue. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> so as usual here, we are in import torch is the, uh, the by torch and then import numpy as NP. And I want to check if CUDA is available. Um, so uh, it's torch.cuda. Uh, hold on, I think I cannot run this. Let me, let me run this. It's going to throw some error. Yeah, I have to, I have to pip install, uh, I think torch. Yeah. yeah, this is the problem of uh, Google Colab. Every time you, it's it's free, um, but uh, PyTorch is not um, 
installed by default on a uh, Google Colab. So sometimes I prefer to use uh, Kaggle kernel, this one, because in Kaggle kernel you don't have to um, you don't have to import uh, uh, the PyTorch and all, all the, uh, the the all the the libraries of PyTorch. Everything is already pre-installed. But okay, let's see how far this will go. Okay, otherwise we might we might uh, we might have to switch to um, Kaggle kernel. Oh, probably I can just um, I can uh, fire this thing up. Let me see. Since we are waiting anyway, right? Uh, I'm not sure if there's a data or not. Um, convolutional layer. Uh, no, this is not what I want. Um, Uh, anyway, okay, I got distracted. Sorry, guys. Okay, so so over here we are just asking uh, if uh, CUDA is available, and then we'll return that as a boolean, whether uh, true or false, right? And then this one is just gonna train if there is um, CUDA or not. So if CUDA is is not available, um, then we'll uh, if not. Uh, if this satisfy right so we'll we'll check we'll run this and it says good is available right so if you if you um if you uh, print this for example print uh, train on gpu this should give a true answer there you go true Okay, so now we are loading the data. Um, sorry for the noises. Those uh, where I'm, I'm in the library, somebody's like screaming. Or um, okay, so downloading will take a minute. Okay, I think I have to import again the Torch Vision, this one, because if I run this, it will not work. Okay, it says import is failing due to a missing package. So you need to import it. I'll import it one more time over here. So over here, we already Im import the uh, the torch, which is the PyTorch package, right? But since we are using a torch fission, which is a, a library, a deep learning library, specially uh, for fission uh, deep learning. So we have to do pip install Torch vision. Yeah, this is the problem with Google Colab. You just have to keep on doing this because it's not uh, installed by default. Okay, so anyway, it's quite fast. Now you can run this. Okay, right? So if you run this, it should work. So now it's downloading the data, right? From uh, cs.toronto.edu, it's the CVAR 10. So let's go through this one, okay? Um, so this is just importing um, a bunch of packages from uh, Torch Vision datasets and then uh, importing a transform a, a library or package. And then this one, it's uh, importing a subset a random sampler, okay? Um, we'll see where this is going. Okay, so is it, yeah, so it's already downloaded here, okay? So now we are going to uh, just define. So the number of workers is zero. Uh, it says a number of sub processes to use for data loading. I'm not sure what is this use. How many samples per batch to load? Okay, the batch size is 20. That's understood. Uh, the validation size is 0.2, which is 20%. So the training uh, set will be 80%. Um, and then we are defining here uh, a transform. Uh, transform is is, is is a normalization, a pre uh, a pre pro pre processing stage of your data. See if you get this input image, right? 
uh, which is 32 by 32 uh, pixels and uh, three layers, uh, red, green, and blue, because it's color. You cannot just input this image into the model, into the like the net, the computer. The computer doesn't understand that. Uh, and even if it's understand, uh, if you just input it just as is, um, it will take a long time to train it uh, because it's not kind of it's not efficient the the the, the input uh, data. So you need to kind of like make it more efficient. Uh, uh, they, uh, we call it normalization, right? So uh, here, so, so to convert data to a normalized torch flow tensor. So uh, what we do is we uh, go to transform and we want to call uh, compose, right? And inside compose, we pass in these parameters. We want to, tra uh, uh, we call uh, transform dot to tensor. We are converting into tensors. And then after that, we pass in these parameters to, to normalize uh, whatever uh, data that we are going to put uh, uh, the, data, the, the, the image pixel, 32 by 32, right? And this is 0.5, it uh, refers to the um, mean, uh, I think, yeah, it is the mean. And then this is refers to the standard devi deviation, okay? Why three? Because there are three channels. Yeah, so this is for the red, grid, and and blue. So they they just make it the same. Y point five is just is just just to make it you know it's it's I think it's a kind of standard procedures. This one you want to normalize it in such a way that um you I think this is uh, whatever input that you put. So if it's let's say x is minus point five, right, and then divided by point five, the standard deviation. I think it's like that. Yeah. Um, so we can we can actually take a look at this transform um, let's say print print transform let's see okay so if you print transform um, you can see all of these things, right? It's it's it's, a, it's an object that you can call, or it's a function that you can call. That basically um, inside it, it's con uh, converting whatever uh, uh, x you want to put here to tensor, and then you normalize it using these parameters: the mean and the standard deviation. Okay. And then, so. There is that, and then um, we are putting the training data into this um, variable. So we are calling data sets. Data sets is uh, one of the packages that we just import from TorchVision, and we call .cvar10, right? Because we want to, um, um, we're using cvar10, and then uh, the parameters that we set is, is uh, data here, which is uh, where is the data? Which is yeah, it's data, and then train is true, download true, transform equals to transform, right? So you're using the transform here equals to the transform here, right? So we are applying all of these things basically into the uh, CVAR10 data, right? And then the same thing we do for the test data, right? So, obtain training indices that will be used for validation. Okay, so you want to compute how, uh, how much is the training data. We can actually print this one. So, let's see. Uh, so, we don't, have to, we don't have this. We just delete this, right? Um, We'll take a look at it here. So let's say you want to look, take a look at the um, um, num train, right? Num train. So we have fifty thousand uh, training uh, data. Okay. And then range num train list in in di indices. So what is that? Indices. 
with the indices. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. So this is like the the index of all of those fifty thousand. Okay. And then you want to shuffle that. Okay. Np random dot shuffle. Okay. Um. And then split. Split is a valid size. I don't know what's the number of train is fifty thousand. Valid size is point two validation size, right? And then you want to uh, floor it. Uh, integers. Let's see what split is. Split. Okay, so you have ten thousand, which is twenty percent of fifty thousand, right? Um. Yeah, I don't know what's the NP dot floor. Let's say NP dot floor. I'm not sure what does this do. Um, shift up, shift up. Doesn't work. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Return the floor of the input element wise. The floor of the scalar x is the largest integer. Such so that okay. Oh okay, so the okay so floor minus two point five is minus two. Number instead uses the original floor where floor minus two minus, minus three. Ah. Number array minus one point seven minus okay. It's gonna be minus two, minus two, minus one. So okay, so you kind of you kind of uh, round it up to the to the floor, to the nearest uh to the nearest uh, decimal number. Okay. No, I, I know what, what I'm saying. Okay, what it's trying to do. Okay. Okay. Basically, taking out all the decimal into an integer. Okay. Return the floor of the input element wise. Okay. The floor of the scalar is the largest integer i, okay, such that i is less than equals to x, okay. And integer is just integer is um, I think it's um, um, putting uh, the positive value. I think uh, where is it? Int. I think so. And let me see, integer. You can address integer. Convert a number or string to an integer or return zero if not. Okay. Okay. I don't know why you have to do that. I think it's already integer. Anyway. 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 Um, this is the trend index and a validation index. Okay. And this is split. Because the split is. Um, from 10,000 onwards, and then this one is a semicolon to 10,000. Okay, so the training is from from 10,000 onwards, which is basically uh, you got the 40,000, and this one is only from zero to 10,000. Yeah, okay, and this one I think is already being the split. I think is being uh, randomized, is being shuffled, right? Split. The num train uh, indices this range, yeah, it's already being shuffled. So the index is very being shuffled. Okay. So indices like.
Okay. Okay. So let's 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 print indices again. Um, I'm still a bit confused. Okay. Let's say indices like zero. Okay. Indices uh, zero to one. Okay. Zero to two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is basically print, printing the indices. Um, which is already being uh, shuffled, so it's already like kind of like randomized from uh, from uh, from uh, the 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 ten thousand the ten thousand to to the rest, right? Which is to the rest, which is basically until fifty thousand, which is which is which is basically forty thousand in indices over here. So if you look at the trend index. It's going to be uh, a randomized from those indices of the first uh, 40,000, right? That's what it is. Yeah, there you go. Right? It's just randomized, right? And then the same thing as the valid index here is is the next um, is the next uh, 40,000 to 50,000, which is which is ten thousand, right? So, so if you if you if you um, do like this, it will not work. I think. Yeah, there's none. Right. It should be like nine 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 like that. It gives you like one probably. No. No. Like. Yeah, if it's like 1001, yeah, it doesn't work because it's only there's only um, 10,000 members. So this is like the last members, right? So even if you put like 10,001, it it doesn't work. It's just putting the last members of that. Okay, I got that one. So. Um, Okay, so subset random sampler. Okay, the subset random sampler is a function. What? I don't know what is this. Okay, let me let me see what's different there. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is this is what I encourage you to do. So if you under if you don't understand what this function does you just print it out and see what's the result and then you see uh, before and after and then you can see what that function do right so I'm, I'm trying to see what is this function does the subset random sampler does to this to this uh, trend indices I understand what what this function already does right to the train uh, for the train IDX right so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna understand um, let's say can I do this? No, there's no ship. Okay, because it's a is a is a is a is a factor, I think, right? Um, but I can um, I can I can um, I can look at their um, code like this. There's there's two things you can do. You can just uh, give the input output, right? Or you can just type type the code and then type question mark and then you you um, um, execute it. Uh, we just shift enter. Let's see. Oh, subset random sampler. Is that correct? Doesn't work. Huh. Probably is over here. There you go. Okay. So. Where is the subset? Subset and random sampler. Self and the indices. It sample elements randomly from a given list of indices without replacement. Ah, okay. Actually, you don't have to do this because it's already random. Anyway. You, you know why? Because it's already random. Um, so if you... 
the, I bet the, the output of this trend sampler, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know why the other do this. Like it's like doubling. It's if it's like doubling shuffling. You know, you you you, sh you shuffle two times, which is. I mean, I, I don't know if it's necessary, right? You just print out like I don't know from from zero to like two. Hmm. Oh, is it putting it into a like a function? Okay. Huh. Putting it into a function. Hmm. Trend sampler. Okay, you cannot even get it. Like, can you like? Say print. Trend sampler. Dot util data sample is an object. It's an object. Okay, it's putting it into an object. Okay. Okay. So you cannot access it directly. It's not an indices like uh, the train IDX. So this one you can put it on it. You can put it in a you can see what's the inside, right? Okay. This is going to bring out the whole thing. Can you check the ship? No. Okay. Um, can you check the type? No. What can you do with it? Uh, huh. Insert pop. Okay. Okay. And the other one is trend sampler. Uh, I need to understand this. Sorry, guys. Indices. Happen. Count. Index. Pop. Oh. Okay. So is this like um like zero to two? I like got. Oh. Okay. Hmm. So this thing is 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 a way of putting it into an object. Okay. So when you call it, you have to call the, um, you have to go into that thing, because that thing is the same as the uh, uh, train IDX train IDX. This is the same thing, basically. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put comma there. Jeez. Okay, I'm gonna separate. It. Whatever, dude. Whatever. I'm gonna separate the thing. There. Happy? See, it's exactly the same. Huh. It's just putting it into an object. It doesn't even um. It doesn't even um. Shovel it anymore. It's the same. It's the same thing. Like if I put like. Let's say from ten indices to let's say uh. 13 okay and then this one then from 10 to 13 is the same thing yeah exactly the same thing hmm okay uh, I don't know why you want to do that I, 
I'm still thinking. Yeah, I'm still confused about this pre-processing sometimes. It's just, I mean, it's it's kind of like simple, but it's kind of complicated too at the same time. I mean, I don't understand what's the, the logic of doing this. Okay, anyway, we're, we're, we're uh, too long here. So well, let's, just, let's just move on, okay? Okay, because, okay, because this thing, if you look at the, um, if you look at the, um, the function subset random sampler, it says it's supposed to, it's supposed to random, randomize. Look at this. Sample elements randomly. What are you talking about? You didn't sample it randomly. You're, you're just taking it as is. Hmm. <laughs> so this is kind of wrong. It's not true. I don't know. The documentation sucks. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. So, so I learned one thing. Um, you cannot trust the documentation or am I wrong? I don't know. You tell me. It says it says randomly, but when I when I um, when I uh, print it, it's the same thing. The indices is the same. Okay, so it's not random. Okay, so um, so prepare data loaders. Okay, um, combine data set and sampler. Okay, so you call the torch uh, dot utils dot data. Uh, I think it's from here. Yeah, okay. From here. And then dot what else? Dot um, data loader. And then you pass in the train data. Train data is um, is all the um, uh, the training data, basically. The the, 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 the the training data uh, itself the, the 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 pixels the the data so let's say uh, it's 32 by 32 um, it's already finalized let's see uh, I can just print it out for you and for myself so train data it's basically the actual image data that has been normalized. So for example, if I put ship, I think there should be a ship. No, no ship. Okay, whatever. Okay, can I just do zero? Yes. CVAR 10 data doesn't have ship. Oh my gosh, that's annoying. Um, so you can see um, the, the ranges of this is basically it's the pixel uh, data from emits the first image I don't know I don't know whether the first image is aeroplane or not but whatever image is the first one this is what it looks like uh, in a number form in a you know between uh, I think minus one to one right um, so it's already normalized because um, the normal the normal um, uh, number is between 0 to 255 right because this uh, tensor or this uh, uh, image data number 0 which is the first data is already normalized remember we already transform it over here right using this uh, function transform equal to transform right uh, and we specify the transform is um, um, uh, we uh, turn it into a tensor. Tensor is just a, a, a list of an array. It's a special kind of format that um, the model can like accept. And then we minus 0.5 and divide it by 0.5, right? This is the minus mean and divided by the standard deviation. And this is just because it's a color image. So there's three, three, um, three channels. So each of the channel has their own number kind of, right? So if you have a image, for example, uh, of, I don't know, aeroplane, for example, yeah, that's for example, this one, right? And then the first pixel of that image, for example, is a, 
I don't know. It's a it's a white, really white. Let's say it's it's the um, okay, just this one. It's it's a, like a uh, you know like a white cloud, right? So that one, the pixel is like zero, you know, like like zero one, right? Hey, wait, no, zero is like a black. Yeah, the higher the two fifty five, I think it's a white. Yeah. So so for example, it's it's zero. It's a black image, right? So you find the mean. Um, 0.5 and then you divide it by 0.5 the standard deviation okay so anyway um, um, where am I I'm I'm losing my train of thoughts okay we're looking at the train data okay we are Okay, we are trying to understand the train loader. Okay, so you're putting all of the images, normalized uh, pixel images, into this function, right? Data loader. And you're also specifying the bed size um, of, I think, 20, the bed size. Yeah. So you want to train every 20 images. You want to do like um, kind of uh, back propagation. Because you don't want to do like um, um, back propagation like uh, only once every um, epoch, or which is like what forty thousand images training images. Uh, it's gonna take a long time, <laughs> right? Um, so you want to do it more frequent. So you specify like every twenty images. You want to do like compute the gradient and then, and then update the the width and all that stuff. Good stuff. Um, and you sampler the sampler is a train sampler, which is uh, this guy is an object basically of the in 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 the in indices basically of the the training indices, right? Uh, which is randomized. Okay, and then the number of workers I don't know what's number of workers is zero. Okay. The same thing we do for the valid validation loader. Um, so you put all the the, the train data. Okay. Um, data. Data sets. The test data. I don't know what's the driven within. Oh, this is train equals true. This is train equals false. Okay. The number of workers zero. Bad size is bad size. Okay. The sampler is a index is a valid sampler, which is which is um uh, indices of the uh, validation, which is only twenty percent. Okay. You still get it from the training data because the training data is the whole thing, right? It's the uh, the train data is a uh, is the whole fifty thousand. So if you compute len, let's say len len is the whole fifty thousand. Where is it? Yeah, it's the whole fifty thousand, right? But you're only taking so you need you need a, an index, so you need this this like um, as a pointer where uh, where to which one to get out of those 50,000 which means you're only getting um, a specific uh, number which is only 10,000 and that number that 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 index is already being uh, randomized right um, the test loader is the same thing is except is a test data and there is no sampler see the test data here the training is equals to false oh okay let's see how much is the test data test data oh it's 10,000 okay so we have a 
um, training data 40,000 where I mean the whole is 50,000 but you divide by uh, training divided by two training and validation is kind of confusing so 40,000 to train the model um, 10,000 to uh, validate and another 10,000 to test okay sounds sounds good yeah and then you specify the image classes okay you can um let's 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 find out about this let's find out about this okay can i just do this no it's wrong okay i'll just do this okay so what is this data loader it's a self data set bed size shovel sampler none let me see what's this um bed side bed side test data test data bed size number of workers okay the data set bed size is one by default shuffle false so you don't have to shuffle oh you can actually shuffle it from here okay so actually if you shuffle through here um then you don't have to do this you don't have to do this thing right. anyway um what is number of workers okay it's combining a data set and a sampler and provides a single multi-process iterators over the data set so it's, it's, it's an iterator okay the data set and the sampler the sampler is um, is uh, index to that data okay got it it's like it's like a pointer which data to pick and this is the like an iterator okay bed size data at every epoch oh that does reshuffle at every epoch okay sampler bed sampler number of workers how many sub process to use for data loading zero means that the data will be loaded in the main process how many sub process to use for data loading what do you mean by sub process um, I'm not sure about that number of workers is zero it's by default what is the number of workers okay yeah I'm not sure what is mean what is number of sub process what's sub process yeah probably there's a further documentation that you have to read okay i'm not gonna go into that sorry okay all right so this is good okay next uh we're gonna import the uh, matplot uh, lib library just to uh, show helper function to anonymize and display an image okay okay and then obtain one batch of training images so uh, from train loader either there is an images label images numpy convert images to numpy for display and then you want to display the first 20 images okay 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 fine so this is the first 20 images hmm. okay um, 
and then view an image in more detail. Okay, this NP squeeze. I don't know what is that. Uh, XM show annotate. Okay, so we look at the normalized red, green, and blue color channel as three separate. Okay, let's see what is this. Come on, come on. So it's taking figure size 36 by 36. Whoa, this is so cool. Wow. Okay. 36, is it 36? I thought it's 32 by 32. Oh, it's 32 by 32. Why is it become 36 by 36? Hmm. Why is that? Um, where is this 36 by 36? Oh, this, this one, right? 36 by 36. Okay. 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 So this is the red channel with all the, uh, the pixel values already normalized. Hmm. Oh, it's 32 actually. Yeah. I think that's just the 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 the, the, the base uh, canvas is like 36. Okay, so let me see this. So this is and this is green channel. So if you if you look at the value closely, I don't know if you can see it from there. Let me It's it's um it's like from negative one is point eight seven and until a uh, positive one and they have a if you look at the the white one it's greater right so if you if you look at the value of uh, the black one is negative right the white one is uh, like point five eight point seven okay oh what did i do oh my gosh did i do something like oh my gosh oh, oh no okay Okay. Okay. Uh, where are we right now? Um, okay. So we're looking at the different channel. Right. You can see they're slightly. I'm just gonna make it a bit. Um, they're slightly different, right? It's not exactly the same. Like, like if you look at here, this is 0.53 here. This is 0.55. This is 0.12. It's the same. 1.2. Yeah, this is 0.11. This is 0.22. Yeah, this is 0.46. This is 0.54. Yeah. So the actual number, the pixel number is, is, is different. But if you look at like from far away, it's kind of the same, right? See, it's kind of the same. Okay. That's why you don't want to throw that information. It looks the same, but it's kind of, well, the, the blue channel is very different. If you look at the red and green, it's kind of the same, right? Although if you look at closely, it's different. Especially if you look at, at this area here. Compared to this area, the one here, it's totally different, the number, right? So over here is like 0.24, over here is like 0.23, it's different. But if you look at the blue channel, compared to the green channel, it's, it's, 
is you can see it's obvious. It's, you know it's a it's a different pictures, right? So okay, the blue channel is like um, very different, but the red and green uh, is kind of difficult to tell the difference unless unless probably you eyeball it. Okay. All right. Okay, so now we are want to define the network architecture. Okay. Uh, this time you'll define a CNN architecture instead of an MLP, multi-layer uh, perceptron, which use linear, fully connected layers. You'll use the following. Okay, I'm gonna need some more uh, T here. Um, Convolution layer, which can be thought as a stack of filtered images. Okay. Max pooling layer, which reduce the x y size of an input. So the 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 uh, uh, x y size, you can reduce it using max pooling. Right. The max pooling is basically a filter that um, get the maximum number. Uh, if you convolve that filter to an image, it will get just the maximum number. So, for example, if you imagine there's a 2x2 uh, two two max pooling uh, filter, right? And then you convolve that into, a, into an uh, image. Let's say that image has uh, 1, 4, 2, 6. So, the maximum number of that particular um, uh, subset if you convolve it in with the max pooling uh, uh, two by two, because one, four, two, six, the, the maximum is six, right? So the output will be just six. So it will reduce uh, the ratio. Um, um, yeah, so it will just get the maximum anyway. Okay. Um, so it, keeping only the most active pixels, so, okay, that's another way of saying it because the most active pixel is kind of the the kind of the brightest one, the one that has the highest number, right? The maximum number, because the the higher the number is the brightest it is, right? From zero to to fifty five. The usual linear and drop out layers to avoid overfitting. So this one, uh, max pooling layer is also being used. Uh, why, why do you want to reduce it, right? Uh, the other reasons why do you want to reduce it is because you want to speed up the, the competition, the computations uh, when you're actually training the model, right? Um, because the... Um, the, the size, the x, y is going to be reduced uh, quite significantly, depending on the um, the 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 stride. Uh, I think it's just depending on the stride of the, your max pooling layer. Okay. And then um, because you want to avoid overfitting, you want to generalize um, your model, so you need to use uh, fully connected the linear plus dropout. Um, so uh, this is what it looks like. So a network with two convolutional layer is shown in the image below and in the code. And you've been given starter code with one convolutional and one max pooling. OK, so this is the input image. And then go through one uh, convolutional layer, the first convolutional layer. And then you go to the pooling layer, max pooling. And then you go through another the second convolutional layer. And then get another the second max pooling layer. See, if you uh, notice, every time it goes to the max pooling layer, the uh, x and y uh, size, it becomes uh, smaller. But the depth, the depth, it's supposed to be, as you go through the model, as you go through the, from input to output, the depth is, has to be uh, uh, bigger and bigger because the depth uh, represents uh, extracted uh, patterns. The depth um, uh, 
represent the uh, feature re representative representation of that image. So for example, if this image is like a dog, right? And then, and dog has like nose, has like uh, the tongue and the, the mouth. So as you go through all of those, the dev um, represents all of the filtered images, all of, and of each of those filtered images uh, represent like a different patterns of that dog. So for example, probably one of the f filtered um, images represents like the, the nose. The second uh, filter images represents like the 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 eye. The third filter images represents the uh, I don't know the saliva probably. The fourth filter images represent probably the fur the fur and so on, right? It's just basically uh, represent a different kind of patterns for that particular object, right? So that's why you have many extracted patterns. So the extracted pattern it uh, so your layer become like deeper and deeper. There's ma many of them. Well, while the size, the, the matrices, the X and Y become uh, smaller and smaller. Um, and then the last one, you want to connect that to a fully connected with a dropout layer to avoid overfitting and produce a 10 dimensional output because you want to create 10 classes. Okay, so to do, define a model with multiple convolutional layers and define the fit forward network behavior. Okay, the more convolutional layers you include, the more complex pattern in color and shape a model can detect. Okay, it's suggested that your final model include two or three convolutional layers as well as linear layers and dropout in between to avoid overfitting. It's good practice to look at existing research and implementation of related models as a starting point for defining your own models. You may find it useful to look at this Python class, which is an example. Oh, I got runtime disconnected. Seriously? Oh, no, 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 no. See? Okay, let's see, it's running. What? This is what I don't like about using Google Colab. Uh, sometimes it just get disconnected randomly. It's, it's not stable, but I think it's getting better and better. So like that one, I don't know why it appears, um, but it's still working actually. Okay, so yeah. So, okay, where are we now? Okay, so, um, okay. So output volume for a convolutional layer. To compute the output size of a given convolutional layer, we can perform the following calculation. Okay. We can compute the spatial size of the output volume as a function of the input volume size. W, the kernel, F, the stripe in which they are applied, the amount of zero padding, the correct formula for counting how many neurons define the output W given by uh, input volume size minus uh, kernel size plus two padding times the padding divided by strat plus one. For example, for a seven by seven input and three by three filter with strat one and pad zero, we would get five by five output. With strat two, we would get three by three output. Okay. Because if you put seven here, seven minus three is four plus two P the p is zero so still four divided by s plus one two wait a minute with seven minus 
f kernel size minus 3 is 4 plus 0 to p still 4 divided by stratus 1 so 1 plus 1 2 so 4 divided by 2 is 2 why is it 5 by 5 output oh man the input volume size w Hmm. Okay, anyway. Um, okay, so this is where we define. So you're importing the torch.nm, the neural network um, package. And then you're importing, importing also the function, sf. Uh, and then you're defining the SNN architecture. You're creating a class called net. Um, and then you you're defining it at init. So you're defining the first uh, conversion layer with this conf2d. So three, uh, because the input is three, because it's a, it's a, it's a um, color channel with three uh, input RGB, and then you want the output to be 16. Uh, this is kind of arbitrary. You can put like 32 or 64. In this case, you want your output to be uh, 16 filtered images. Um, and then you want the um, filter size to be 3 by 3. I think this is the filter size. Um, and you want the padding as 1. Because you want to... Um, you want to uh, convolve everything over that images because if you have a filter size of three by three um, in order to fully uh, convolve uh, that filter size three by three uh, you need to pat to pat uh, the images um, by one, which is you're you're putting additional like one to the left, one to the right, and one to the top, and one to the bottom, right? Uh, I don't know if I can show you an example here. No, there's no example here. Um, I don't know if I can show you this. Uh, no. Uh. I want to show you why is it um, oh here so this is uh, the filter 3 by 3 right um, so if you can see um, so first if it goes here and then second goes here so let's say the stretch one right third goes here and then fourth and then it will stop here right right but actually you still have like um, two more rows right so you need to a uh, pat like um, um, for example if this is the original image like this is what, what one two three four five which it is a five by five images and then you have three by three filter right so you're convolving from here to here right because three by three first you convolve it over here and then convolve over here and you convert here and then you and then you stop there if you don't pat at all, right? But actually, you still need, need to convolve another two, two morrows, right? This one and this one, right? So in order to do that, you have to pat one equals to one because pat one equals to one means you put additional row on the left, additional row on, oh, sorry, on the left and the right, and then additional, sorry, additional column, right? Uh, left and right, and then additional row top and bottom. So you can convolve until the end so you can keep on going instead of stopping here over here the filter you can still convolve here right over here and then you can convolve over over here too so you convolve everything yeah 
so or you you still preserve kind of preserve the um um uh, preserve the the dimension otherwise if you don't pat um let's say you come from, uh, you, from here right you got you got one two three so you got only three by three right so and then down one two three so you you'll get a three by three um output but if you um if you uh, add the padding then you'll get um, instead of three by three you still get five by five i don't know why is this i think they they just they just um took it out oh the strat is two okay this is the strat is two okay that's why you got three by three okay got it okay so um yeah so that's the reason why uh you want uh to pat uh because you still want to preserve the the x and y where is the you still want to preserve the x y dimension over here so as you go through the conversational layer if the input is 32 by 32 you don't want to reduce like if you have to reduce you can reduce it probably just by a little bit but in 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 a in a, in a normal practice the x and y doesn't get reduced so um uh especially in the early layers of the conversational layer so you want to still to maintain if it's this 32 by 32 you still want to maintain 32 by 32 so that's why you need to pad it right so over here the padding is one uh if the the, and the filter is three, which means it's still um, the 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 matrix is still the same. See, so if, if the input uh, images is 32 by 32, right? Over here is 32 by 32. Um, what is it? Yeah, this one 32 by 32. Then um, you can actually look at the. I think you can look at the train index dot ship. Can you do? Yeah, ship. No, there's no ship. I don't like this. I don't like this anymore. <laughs> anyway, okay. Okay, so okay, so that's why you need to preserve the. Um, uh, so you put this padding, right? And then uh, you do max pooling. So max pooling is basically to reduce the X and Y. You look at here. After the max pooling, the convolutional layer is reduced significantly. Like it's the same size as the, the size of the max pooling in terms of the X and Y. Right? So over here is a filter size of 2 and the strat is 2. So this one de uh, basically defines, the strat defines the um, the 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 output of that uh, so if it's two you just divide the input with with this number so if um, the input from here is still 32 from this layer right because you still preserve with this padding so 32 by 32 and then you divide by two so it's going to be 16 so the output of this is going to be 16 by 16 and then you define the forward function over here so you apply ReLU on the uh, first convolution right if you look at here oh it, it doesn't being uh, so you you want to put ralu over here there's a ralu on the after the output of the convolution before you input it to the pulling layer and then yeah so and then you you pull it you put it on the pulling layer and then you return that um uh, that x okay and then um so this is to create the model and then say okay let's import this so now if you can see now this is the the model is basically consists of first is convolution layer and then the second one is a 
pooling layer but the convolutional um, the the pooling layer has uh, has um, has a ReLU function right over here it doesn't it doesn't actually say anyway but it has a you know it's being defined there um, okay and then you specify the loss function here and then you train the network okay I think we have to um, continue this another day uh, this is taking too long already okay I'll 